One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch. This book talks about how when you invest alone, you should be able to outperform big corporations and companies. And in this book, it teaches you how to pick stocks that multiply by tenfold. It explains that when stocks get to the news, it's almost too late to pick the ones that multiply by 10. It also proclaims how you can become your own research analyst by going to your local stores and testing products. And with that in mind, you need to find hot products before Wall Street does and do the research on your own. Investing in stocks is an art, not a science, and anyone can be an analyst. Try to take the gambling involved out of stocks and invest in the ones that have good fundamentals and hold on to them forever. About 70% of the shares in any stock are owned by institutions. And if a stock is down, but the fundamentals are good, it's a buy and to hold onto that stock for a long time. Institutions will typically pick less volatile stocks that are established over new and up and coming stocks just because they want to take less risk involved. That is where you, the individual investor, can excel. A lot of successful people realize that stocks don't always win. You should be happy with about six out of every 10 of your stocks you pick becoming winners. Before you invest, you should ask yourself three questions. Do I own a house? Can I lose this money? And do I have the quality to become a good investor? You need to ignore your gut feelings. It's impossible to predict the market. It doesn't matter what market we're in. You need to look for opportunities that Wall Street hasn't found yet. And look for the best stocks at home. The average person comes across two, three great stocks per year. And smaller companies make the biggest moves on the stock exchange. Some good stocks to find are boring stocks that do boring things and are flying under the radar. Try to look for stocks that do gross work like cleaning and dumpster trucks. Or spinoff companies are good as well. You want the stocks that institutions don't own it and analysts don't follow it. Even better yet, find the stocks that have negative rumors about the company. Waste management is a perfect example for this because they're assumed to be working with the mafia and they take out trash for a living. You want to find companies in a no growth industry and they need a niche. For example, a rock pit is a pretty boring company. Another thing is people need to be able to buy the product. They need to have it instead of it becoming a want. For example, you need water, but you don't need toys. The owners of the company need to be putting money into the stock. The company has to be buying back their stocks. And some good rules of thumb are avoid hot stocks that are in the news that everyone is talking about. If everyone knows about it, not everyone's going to make money about it. Avoid the next dizzy and avoid companies that are doing a lot of acquisitions and avoid stocks that are trying to do the impossible. Avoid companies that have all their eggs in one basket, meaning they only have a few clients. And if those clients were to leave, their company would tumble. Avoid stocks with excessively high to PE ratios. And if you're buying a stock, you should be able to give a short monologue why you want it. Make sure the idea works in all places and be aware of the tax sell-off between October and December. The most money that Peter Lynch said he'd ever made was in owning a stock for more than three to four years. So be wary and invest in what you know. If you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more future content. Content.